You wouldn't believe it's 2020 sometimes. Um, footballer Thomas Beattie has made headlines, becoming only the second ever British male professional player to come out as gay. He follows in the footsteps of Justin Fashnu, who was the first to go public, but that was over 30 years ago. Well, Thomas joins us from Singapore, where he now lives and works. Thomas, so good to see you. Thank you for joining us this morning. And um, this sends out a really powerful message. It was actually really brave of you to do this. Were you slightly apprehensive? Yeah, I mean, obviously, whenever you kind of bear your soul to, to a, a large group of people, it's, it's quite daunting. But I'm quite fortunate in the, uh, in the professional environment. I mean, I don't really have to answer to, to co-workers and bosses and such. So I, I'm not naive to the fact that it was a little bit less, um, it was a little bit less daunting for me than it is for many others. But still, it was, yeah, it was a difficult thing to do. But I'm, I'm glad it's over with now. And what sort of reaction have you had, Thomas? I've had a great reaction, to be honest. It's, it's been mostly positive. I mean, every now and again, you get the odd comment. But I think um, on a whole, I've been yeah really overwhelmed with uh, some of the comments and the messages and, and uh, the calls that have, that have come in. So, yeah, I'm, I'm really delighted with it. Good. That's really good to hear, actually, and very, very encouraging. Because the hope is that maybe, because we know there are gay footballers, of course there are, we, we know that, there, there has to be, um, but they haven't felt that they're able, and it's completely their decision, but they haven't felt that they're able to come out. Maybe seeing you, maybe that just helps a little bit? Yeah, I think it's, um, I think it's important to, to have more visibility and, and awareness of, of different sexual orientations within sport and society. I think um, as a culture, we've, we've been a little bit sheltered from it. And I think there's a lot of systemic uh, prejudice towards it. So I think just having more visibility and, and more awareness of different sexual orientations is, is definitely going to benefit um, society and inside and outside sport, I hope. Absolutely. I mean, we know that football is a very macho sport. Um, you know, it, it really is. And it is really difficult. I mean, you, you've played all over the world. I mean, I know you played in Singapore and you played in Canada and America and over here in the UK. You've played everywhere. At the time, it would have been almost impossible for you when you were playing to have come out. It, it, do you think it would have been, I, I mean, I don't know the, the reaction that you would have got? Yeah, I, I mean, it's... Football is a very volatile sport, right? You kind of move in all the time, and we're not rooted to the to one spot as athletes. So I think um, I think not knowing the reception you're going to get from different environments and countries and, and societies can be can be difficult. But for me, it was it, I was still kind of on a journey of acceptance as well, personally. So for me, I was never really at that point of fully accepting it. I think um, being in that environment probably made that difficult for me to really self-analyze who I really was and comprehend it. But yeah, like I said, I think now I'm, I'm more content with that. And so it, it, was, it was the right time for me. No, absolutely. So, and everybody, it's, it's not, you know, it's for everybody to make the decision as to when they come out and they have to decide what's the right time for them. Um, you have had a, a positive reaction, which is wonderful. And things are getting better, aren't they, Thomas? I mean, you're living and working in Singapore. Things are getting a little bit easier. It's baby steps all of the time, though, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, you'd like to think, obviously, it's, things, are, things are progressing. There's still a lot that needs to be done. I think within sport and outside of sport, there's, you know, I think the, I think the, the guidelines and the policies of, of anti-homophobia within sport and, and just in, in society need to be quite clear. I think because it's still a little bit blurry and taboo and we don't really talk about it, I think it almost exonerates people from talk, talking about the, uh, the topic. But, I mean, from the reception I've had, I, I kind of think maybe I could have done this a lot sooner, but... Then again, hindsight is is really easy, right? So, I'm, like I said, I'm lucky. I'm, I'm fortunate. I've done it now, and and the reception I've I've had has been great. So, yeah, definitely, I think it's baby steps and and progressing slowly. Yeah, and it's got to be the right time for you. You know, it's 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 always going to be different for absolutely everyone else. Your advice, because I know there will be people watching this morning who play football and maybe families, friends, whatever, and they are not able to tell their truth for whatever reason. What what would your advice be to them? I think, um, well, I would never encourage anybody to do it if they're not ready. I think, like you said, it's everyone's you know, own time and, and it's everyone's personal journey. But I think it's important to have one person at least who you can kind of lean on for support. I think um, dealing with this internally by yourself can be really difficult. So I think find one person who you can kind of lean on and, and kind of share things with you might not typically share with friends and family. Um, that definitely helped me. I had a few people which help me along that journey. So, yeah, I think understanding that there's, there's always other people in a, in a similar scenario and just finding that one person who you can kind of lean on a little bit and, and confiding is definitely, um, definitely beneficial.
And do you feel now a huge sense of relief almost that there it is, this is who I am? I do, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's fairly liberating, but at the same time, it's been a little bit of a difficult week for me. I've been quite overwhelmed with it. So I'm not used to talking about it every day. So this has been quite an overwhelming week for me, um, talking about it a lot this week. But yeah, I mean, definitely a liberating feeling. And um and I'm glad that the, the journey has kind of led me to where I am. So, yeah, definitely a, a place of contentment right now. Good. I'm very glad to hear it. And, Thomas, what it does, I mean, you're talking about this, and us talking about it this morning, it just opens up a debate. It just means that maybe people can have so oftentimes quite tough conversations with their family because not all families, sadly, are accepting. I mean, I know in your case, you know, it was fine. It was, it was OK. It was all right. But it's not always like that. But it's, it's just getting people to talk and it's just getting people to, to realise, you know what, we're all the same, really. We're all just trying to go on with our lives. Yeah, right. I think, um, I think that one of the benefits of it is, is the visibility. I think creating a conversation about it was, was important. It's something that um, is, is not really spoken about in some environments. And, and especially where I grew up, I was definitely not exposed to, um, to different uh, sexual orientations in, in the LGBT community. So I think um, now we've got the conversation started. We've had some great uh, conversations with the PFA. Um, the Professional Football Association in England. So I think within sport and outside of sport, it's definitely been um, a small ripple effect. I, I don't assume um, myself or any other individual is going to is going to change things overnight. But I think um, definitely, definitely given confidence by the the progress that's been made over the last week. Well, Thomas, I think you're fabulous. Thank you for coming in and talking to us. Well, not coming in. You were there and I was here, but you know what I mean. <laughs> maybe one day, maybe one day we'll be able to actually meet face to face, which would be lovely. Um, just, you know, take care of yourself. I, I know in Singapore, it's, uh, it's actually, they're on it, this whole virus. It's, um, you're okay. Things are opening yeah. up a little bit, aren't they? Yeah, we're doing all right. We're Good. in lockdown, but it's safe enough. So, yeah. Good. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Thomas. Great to talk to you this morning. Thank you. That made a big difference to a lot of people.